wanted to show the 90 gallon neon tank that I've got brewing these days and tell a quick story about it. I, uh, this tank, I only had like five or six neons in last week and I decided to move my neons from my 75 gallon tank way down low uh, up here to the front of the office where people can walk in and see them. Everybody loves a big school of neons. What's up fish tank people? So in today's video I'm going to break down some ways that I've gotten my tanks off balance in the past. You can see this video back from 2010 when I had an aquarium set up in the front window and I had duckweed as my throttle gauge and I took a little too much of it out. I'm uh, not feeling that balance today. Dusty was up a little bit late last night watching the Eagles. The closest thing that I'm ever going to have to one of my NFL teams actually going and participating in the Super Bowl and winning it. Lord knows the Browns can't even get to the playoffs, much less win a game. So in today's video, I want to show you how I've gotten off balance in a couple of tanks and then what I've done to fix it. So I'll be coming in and out throughout this video. Removed three quarters of the duckweed. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, I should have left the duckweed alone, done the water change, and um, that way I probably wouldn't have had the algae bloom that I had. Because what I did was I increased the fish load and I removed some of the filtering, so to speak. Uh, I also added the Whisper Number 3, which by the way, I love these filters. I've had these forever. These are like the original filters that I've had when I was like a kid. And they, they work good and they're quiet. And I mean, I just shove a sponge and that's how I do it. But um, so I, if I had done it over, I would have added the filter a couple weeks before I added the fish. And then I would have left the duckweed alone. I still would have done the big water change. But as you can see, um, there's a little bit of an algae problem and that's self-inflicted. So... Um, you know, let that be a lesson. If you're going to add fish to a tank, you know, leave the plants alone, even if they're a, a pest plant, because they'll, they'll do you some good. And then obviously after the tank gets balanced, so to speak, um, you know, that will work out a little better. I basically was running the tank a little too rich. I don't know if you just saw that bubble that went up. That came from the, uh, from the, from the uh, CO2 coming from the dirt that I've got in there. <laughs> the old flip cam. I love the old flip cam. You could just like flip the side and like, shove the video in. It would be video 0001 on my YouTube channel back before I even titled videos. But this uh, this tank, the, the camera and this tank are being done justice because of the glare and because of the crappy camera. But this tank was actually really sweet because when you walked in, it got hit with full sunlight. So the plants grew really, really well. And it was a 90 with a bunch of neons in it. Neon tetras are always cool. In a school, click the links around here. Check out my... Uh, Techno Tetra Tips on a Tuesday where you can see more where I talk about individual Tetra species. But yeah, this tank, I actually removed the duckweed too fast. I uh, had a lot of good plant growth, but then I removed some of that plant growth, some of that plant mass, then I added more fish. So I went the opposite direction. I should have been, while I was adding fish, I should have maybe possibly even increased the plant load instead of decreasing it. So I ended up getting a little bit of algae and uh, I've got more to show you that with the no maintenance, high maintenance tank. Gonna roll with the old orange and black platies, like your plain Jane, run of the mill, bulletproof as they call them, platies. So we're gonna put these suckers in here. Why platies? Well, for one, they're super hardy. Uh, two, if I lose them, I'm not gonna be totally devastated. And uh, three, I think they're gonna look really cool. So we're gonna release some platies here in a little bit. I don't typically recommend pouring this water from the bag into the tank, but oh well. I got enough to explore on here. I'll be all right. Go big dude. Go big man. Yeah, little dude's first in. Fish in here, and I am gonna add some more fish, but whatever. Um, there's, I, I just, I like the look of a lot of fish in here. The problem is I'm getting these algae issues with it. So I'm gonna add some more plants. I'm gonna do a water change and uh, get this thing cleaned up. I'm also gonna add some moss that I like the look of instead of that moss. So let's clean this sucker up. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, at Dustin's Fish Tanks, this is going on live over there right now. All right, so after years of having this tank, I finally left the bucket here here so I've got this big bucket and this bucket right here I fill into this bucket dump it into here it's not as good as a siphon but it works and uh, I take this sucker and we're just gonna do a little I don't know no more than like five six gallons just just enough to get a little something going how fast can dusty suck nailed it 
And speaking of sucking beyond just Tom Brady's ability to catch a football, um, I want to talk about the no maintenance tank. Like, look, when I look at it, like from afar, when I look at the no maintenance tank, it's like stark, barren kind of aquascape with a lot of rocks and not a lot of plants. Just isn't conducive to a balanced environment with a ridiculous amount of fish that breed all the time. I'm also not there, so I don't know how often they're being fed. So the no maintenance tank is actually a high maintenance tank. Now, if I were to do it again, and I'm not going to do this because it's going along just fine, I would like valet or kabamba it or add a bunch of wisteria or add some like super duper fast growing giant plant mass plants to absorb all the extra nutrients that are caused by the high amount, relatively high amount of the live bears that are in there. Now, I walk by every now and then I'm like, oh, the tank's got some algae on it. Well, the tank's got algae on it because it doesn't have a high plant load. I don't know how long the lights are on. The lights are on around the room periodically, left on all night. So never ending light causing algae. And then I don't have that great of a plant load in there. So hindsight's 2020. I do like the way the no maintenance tank looks, but the reality of it is that's why it has that because the plant load isn't as high as the fish load. And I just keep adding fish, keep adding fish. Period. I only have the lights on for like two or three hours. That's it. So that's for now while I battle this algae. And now no net Dustin is going to continue his fish acclimating without nets. We're not going to add any of the water from this bag into this tank because why not? Got my bucket here. Got my fish extra, whoa, extra, extra loaded full of water. So we're just kind of doing another somewhat small partial water change. Dump it in. Three of them in there, I got two in the bucket right here. And there's how the no maintenance tank is looking after a little bit of maintenance and about five more fish. Drop me a comment how you stay balanced in your tanks. Everybody have an awesome week ahead. Go Eagles and tank on.